Okay, so now that I've got all my data entered, I'm going to utilize this populate with defaults macro. All I have to do is click the button, give the, give the macro a half a second to work. Okay, so we see we got the, uh, the hourglass for a half a second there. Once it was finished, we can go back and we see that all of our data, all of our empty cells have been populated, pre-populated with zeros, okay? All right, so what's the next step? The next step is to utilize the validate macro, all right? So what we're gonna do is click validate, and you can see that the, the uh, system automatically located all of our fails that we need to fix. And it tells us how many of those there were. Um, so 17, not bad. Let's see if we can figure out why we, we got some fails here. All right, so on, on row seven, we're looking at a value one of zero. So we had zero complaints on hand in part two, okay, in part two of the formal complaints activities this year on line A. However, we filled in seven as being last year, okay? That's a possibility. So how do we fix this fail? We come over here to column K of the tool and we actually type in why the two numbers don't match, okay? So you did a reconciliation. Um, you found that uh, two complaints were actually closed and they were erroneously reported last year as being opened, okay? So you put in your, com your comment and you scroll back over and you see that you've now passed that edit check, okay? And so that's how you read. You wanna look across the row and look at see what part, what table, what line is being compared to what and whether it has to be equal to, greater than, less than, less than or equal to, and what it is that it's comparing it to. Now, you'll notice that there are a number of them down here in part three and part 12 that say they must be not empty, okay? So if we go back here to pay part three, uh, which is on page two, we see that sure enough, we've left some blanks here that we should have filled out. So we have to fill in the EEO director's name and we have to determine, we have to answer the question yes or no, whether or not they uh, are actually reporting directly to the agency head. So if we answer no, then we have to fill out number two for person and title. If we answer yes and remove our no, we can skip number two, but we still have to do number three and number four. All right, and we type these in. Keep in mind you're gonna wanna save as often as you feel necessary, okay? When you do save your Excel spreadsheet, you wanna be sure you save it as an Excel macro enabled workbook. In other words, an XLSM file, okay? Be sure you do that. Um, because you're going to want to be able to run those macros. You have to be able to run those macros to actually submit your report this year. So now I come back over and I see that I have passed the two uh, part three edit checks that I had previously failed. So if I look at part 12, which is on page 10, I see I have some information here. Shame on me, I, I didn't enter the data in those light blue cells like I was supposed to. Okay, all light blue cells have to have data. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to close this tool and I'm gonna open up a tool that has all passes in it so that we can see what the next step should be um, in our process. So we've now passed all of our edit checks. Everything has, all of our light blue cells are populated. Uh, there are no more errors to overcome or fails to overcome. We've got all our comments entered into um, if, we need, if we needed them. So now what we're going to do is, what do we do the first thing? We enable our 
macros, okay? So we've got the macros enabled. We can come over here now and run a, I'm sorry, run the macro that's called generate XML. We have to generate an XML file in order to submit data to EEOC this year. So there's two files you're going to be uploading to the FedSEP portal. Your XLSM, or your macro-enabled Excel file, as well as this XML that that spreadsheet or workbook or macro is going to actually generate for you. Be sure you um, put in a name. You might want to try a version control as well in case you have to submit more than once. Okay. And I think I got this wrong. I need to be two. All right. And pick where you're going to save it. All right. And click save. I would strongly recommend that you include the agency slash subagency name or the agency underscore subagency name in, in both of your files, just as a quick reference and easy, make it easy for you to be able to find. Okay, so we've generated the XML. You see how quick that was. If I close this Excel tool and I look on my desktop, I see I now have my XML file and I have a XLSM file that I can upload to FedSEP.